Hello everybody, it's Andy Herman again, here to host part three of Russell Tobin's five-part series, Honing Your Digital Presence in a Remote World. Today we're going to be discussing how to master recruiting remotely. Please join me in welcoming Alicia Scully, who is Russell Tobin's Associate Director for our Technology Recruiting Team in New York. We hope that you enjoyed today's show, and after doing so, please make sure to like, ask questions in the comments, and of course, share. On our final episode, I'll be hosting a live Q&A to go over every question that our audience has. Make sure to go out, post those comments, and enjoy today's episode. Hi, everyone, and thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Alicia Scully. I work at Russell Tobin on the technology recruiting team. Um, and today we're gonna be talking through some tips for recruiting remotely. The first tip that I would focus on is just making sure that you have your facts straight. And what I mean by that is before you go into a call and talk with candidates about a role, just make sure that you know exactly what that company does for business, what their culture is like, what the job description is, the typical things that you would cover. But I would go a step further and make sure you're speaking with your, your client or your hiring manager beforehand to get an idea on how are they handling COVID? What's their coming back into the office plan? How is their interview process different these days? How are they adapting and making sure that it's still a smooth interview process? And you're gonna be advising them hopefully along, along the way, but having a good understanding of that upfront is gonna help candidates just really be able to understand what they're getting themselves into and feel comfortable kind of knowing the, the steps. Other big areas that I would focus on too are what are their benefits policies? How are they gonna be onboarding during this time? What are their long-term growth kind of plans for the role? What do they kind of see transpiring between now and the end of the year and then moving into 2021? I mean, those are all questions that if anyone is gonna be taking a leap from a job during this time, like you'd wanna make sure that they cover. So having all that information right up front is really important. The next point would be strong, authentic communication. I think empathy is just huge in recruiting and the best recruiters I've, I've worked with are ones that really are able to understand where the candidates are coming from, what they're going through, and, and be able to just to be a good listener and, and kind of have their back in that way and advise them with, you know, where they're at in mind. You know, that can be a little bit more challenging when you can't like meet in person, grab a coffee, have lunch, and kind of get to know each other on a personal level that way. Um, video interview helps, right? So, you know, as you can, it doesn't have to be every time you talk to your candidate, but for the big conversations, you know, such as maybe that initial call where you're talking them through a lot of the different positions that you're working on or the conversations towards the end of the interview process when you're talking about potential offers, maybe you're weighing a couple offers against each other. Having that happen over video is just gonna help you just kind of humanize yourself and be able to maybe kind of pick up on things and talk through things in a more natural way. I think having empathy towards what they're going through right now, like potentially pay cuts, layoffs, et cetera. I mean, a lot of people are experiencing that. So just being a good listener on that stuff and really, you know, kind of advocating for them um, on the client side and, and just demonstrating to them that you have their best intentions at heart. I think when that's happening genuinely, they can feel it. But, you know, I think everyone is, is definitely feeling the stress of trying to get work done during these times. So just meeting them halfway on that stuff, I think they'll, they'll be able to sense that. My next tip would be to call out the room. That's kind of like a life motto of mine. You can use it in a lot of different ways of just kind of like, just saying what's actually going on. You know, if you're kind of hearing an obstacle coming or you're, you're, you're like sensing that something isn't quite right, just being able to like communicate that in a direct, but you know, approachable way of like, hey, you know, you don't sound that interested in this job. Let's talk about that. But what I mean in this instance is they must feel a little bit uneasy about, you know, maybe making a move, maybe being comfortable going into a new office space. So just really getting an idea on like what's changed these past few months. Like when you when you visualize like your next opportunity, is that semi remote? Is that 100% remote? What's your kind of comfort level? And having a really honest conversation about that. Better to know that stuff up front than to get, you know, down the road with a candidate that's really excited about opportunity and the employer is all of a sudden, you know, not willing to kind of work work with them on that. So I think just open communication on both sides from the get go will help kind of mitigate kind of running into a tricky situation like further down the interview process. So yeah, I would say like the sooner you can create a dynamic based on openness and trust, the earlier you'll get an understanding of what's really gonna be important to them 
um, and get ahead of that on the client side and know like, hey, this person is interviewing today. These are a few non-negotiables. So being able to kind of frame that the right way um, and understand that the big factors, that's gonna help you build your relationship. Cause they're like, wow, this person actually listens. This person actually gets where I'm coming from and gets what's really important to me. And that could be a rare find. <laughs> so that would definitely be a big one, whether you're remote recruiting or any time in the future. So my next tip would be to paint a picture. What I mean by that is that may be a little bit unique, like some of the clients that you're working with right now, or, or you know, even if you're, if you're working internally, the company that, that you're hiring for, maybe you haven't been into the office yet. I definitely have had friends that have started at new companies virtually in the last three or four months and haven't seen the space themselves. And we've definitely been working with some companies where I haven't met them in person myself yet either. But if you have some you know, repeat business that you've been building your team for a longer period of time, you've been to the office space, you've placed people there before, you know the client, you've had lunch with them, you've been to their office, use that to your advantage to really help them understand kind of what they're getting themselves into. So being able to bridge that gap where they may be finding themselves in a situation where they're making a life-changing job decision based on a company or companies where they haven't actually been to the office or met the people they're gonna be working with in person, that's the new normal. So if you can bridge that gap with any details, so tell a story in terms of, hey, I know the hiring manager really well. I've placed a few people on his team. They're really enjoying it. Here are some specific kind of areas that they've succeeded in their first six months to a year. This is what the office kind of looks like. This is the vibe. These are some of the perks that I've seen myself. These are some of the experiences that people I know that work there or that I've placed that work there have had. And just really being able to give them an idea and kind of paint that picture can just help them feel a little bit more comfortable with that. Another little like side tip that you could do is if you know people that work there, whether you've placed them or you have a, you know, a, a contact or someone that you've networked with that works at that company, maybe setting up like kind of a side conversation for them, just like a non, non-interview, non like informal conversation, just for them to kind of get an idea and ask some of those questions that they may not be able to in the interview process. It, it could help them feel a little bit more comfortable with like what they're getting themselves into than they would otherwise. So get creative would be my advice on that. And culture can be a tough thing. So that's why maybe like having them speak with or being able to explain your perception of, of kind of what their culture is like can be really helpful. My next tip would be these times especially is, is being their advocate. So starting from like your first initial conversation with them, really helping them like strategize and like understand their background and help them work through any gaps, right? As I mentioned before, some people may be experiencing layoffs. Maybe they haven't been employed for a few months, you know, not only are you going to need to help them kind of figure out how they're going to navigate that in, in an interview, which will be totally understandable, but it's just kind of be kind of a tough topic to discuss, especially when it's about yourself. So just helping them talk through that, helping them understand their story and kind of talking through all of their experience, where they want to go. It takes a little bit of practice. So I will always kind of go back and forth a few times with candidates before an interview to make sure that they're speaking really well on their own behalf. So giving them a little bit of coaching there and then any other like gaps or problematic areas on their resume, helping them game through that as game plan that as well. Another way to, would be to like think through adjusting the interview process along the way to just make sure that they're meeting enough people and asking the right questions to feel comfortable making a decision. So I kind of touched on that earlier with maybe kind of some informal conversations, but working with the hiring manager and kind of having them put their sales hat on a little bit and make sure that they're kind of going above and beyond to explain kind of the lay of the land, keeping in mind the fact that, you know, this person can't come into the space and see it themselves can help too. And especially if you're kind of connecting the dots on things that are really important to the candidate and you have a good relationship with your hiring manager, where that you can, you know, kind of prep them on those things and make sure that they're explaining those aspects of the role, growth potential, et cetera, in detail, that will really just kind of help these conversations go smoothly and make sure that they're getting the information that they that they want from the horse's mouth. I mean, my last tip would really just be making sure you're prepping them for video interviews. So I'm sure you have kind of your typical preparation model or way that you, you know, touch base with your candidate beforehand to just go through who they'll be speaking with, typical questions that they might be asked, things of that nature and making sure they're prepared on that level but i'd also just go through some last minute tips that people can easily forget making sure that they're with like a plain background making sure they're slowing down speaking clearly and loudly just in case you know who knows someone's internet might be a little wonky so 
uh, making sure they're kind of pausing and, and kind of checking for understanding or making sure that the conversation is flowing as naturally as it can on a Zoom or, or a blue jeans or something like that in a quiet space, you know, that no one's going to run in, turning off any notifications, you know, that, that could be a distraction. I also tell candidates to turn off the video of themselves because they can be kind of distracting when you're just like staring at your reflection as you're interviewing. I know at least is is for myself. So so that that's a helpful one. One thing I would touch on too is just preparing a few like behavioral questions to engage the interview or interviewer rather in a more like conversational way. Typically, like the interview can be like a little bit formal, but think of what they're missing in terms of that, like sitting in the lobby, meeting the receptionist, having the interviewer come and greet them, walking into the conference room. Oh, where are you from? Oh, you live here. Oh, we're going on vacation. Oh, you have a dog, whatever. Things like that. So, you know, just maybe trying to prep on both sides to to just kind of be able to establish that rapport and, and keep you know, after they cover or, or before, like the, the kind of key questions of the interview, reserve a few minutes just to get to know the person, ask them how they're doing, relate to them. It's, it's really helpful. Questions I would ask too would be, why did you join this organization? It's a great a kind of conversation starter, especially if they've joined recently. That can give the candidate a lot of really good insight, especially if they were coming from a great company previously. It's like, hey, how did you decide to kind of make this leap? What has kept you here? You know, what do you like about this organization that's kept you really excited and engaged and moving forward into the role you're in now? What's your management style? How do you structure your typical work day? How has it, maybe the structure changed, you know, in the past few months? Or even like fun things like what are your interests or hobbies, you know, outside of work? And, and have a few ready to, to kind of share on your own. At the end of the day, the, the most important part is, is to just be yourself. You know, once the candidate is prepped, they're ready, encouraging them to, to trust their instincts, take a deep breath, take a walk, smile, and, and, just, and just be themselves. And their, their skills, their energy, their enthusiasm towards the role, their research, all that will, will shine through. So thanks so much for joining me. I, I hope those tips are helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to talk through anything further, um, please reach out to me. Uh, my email is alicia.scully at russeltobin.com. Uh, and yeah, would love to discuss any other uh, tips further and hope you guys are all staying healthy and safe. We hope you enjoyed today's third episode of Honing Your Digital Presence in a Remote World. Please join us next week for our final pre-recorded episode where we're going to cover social tactics on keeping collaborative culture alive with our special guest, Annie Davies. Thank you.